Oh, now we're seeing some brilliant attacking play. Is he going to sweaty it? Oh, what a finish from Marcus Rashford there. In regards to the other games, we do look a bit leaky though. That was a bit of a leaky pass. Do they concede from that? Yes, they do. Oh, wait, that's us. Oh, I thought that was Villarreal. <laughs> that's Fernandez that scores. Fair enough. From David De Gea, they've gone for a short corner. Let's see what they make from this. Oh, Sterling was in behind there. Brilliant ball. Yeah, there. City are overplaying and committing more bodies forward and they are making us suffer for it. I cannot lie. Yes, people, what is going on? It's your boy, Milat Roms in the building and welcome back to another video. I've got something very special for you guys today. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to play like Ralph Ranić at Manchester United. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So, as you guys know, over recent uh, days, we've had Ralph Ragnick join Manchester United as an interim manager uh, at least for the next six months. We've also had the pleasure of seeing him play uh, against Crystal Palace. They won 1-0. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at implementing his style into Manchester United on career mode. We're going to see uh, what the pressing game is like, the formation. As you can see already, I've got the team set up in a 4-2-2-2. But we are going to look at the finer details as to how Ralph Ragnick might want to play this going forward but before we get into this video please make sure to drop a like comment and most importantly don't forget to subscribe to the channel also make sure to turn on those post notification bells too so you know when we upload but without further ado let's go on with it so before we talk about gameplay and anything like that we're going to talk about uh, the formation the lineup the tactics and the instructions within those tactics so uh, we've got we've gone with a four triple two. We've got Tellers at left back, De Gea in goal, Maguire and Lindelof as our centre halves. We've gone with Diogo Dallo as the right back. He was the the right back that played against Crystal Palace, so we've decided to go with uh, both uh, Dallo and Tellers as they were the two fullbacks that started. We've actually decided to go with Pogba as opposed to uh, McTominay next to Fred as the two holding midfielders or the two sixes. Uh, in the two tens, we've got Sancho and Fernandez uh, both playing the two ten roles, and up top we have Marcus Rashford and. Cristiano Ronaldo. Let's get into the tactics. So in regards to tactics, we have done a little bit of research in regards to how uh, Rangnick plays, what he said in uh, previous interviews and what he said as a Man United manager as well in regards to how he wants the team uh, to play. So in terms of our defensive style, we've gone with constant pressure. In terms of the whip, we've gone with 40. The reason why we've gone with 40 is because Ralph Rangnick did say in an, in an interview that he does want his sixes and tens to be on the inside of the opposition players. He wants to make sure that all players are goal side so that when another team picks up the ball, we are nice and central and we're able to lock off their passing options from early in terms of depth we've gone with 80 um, I believe that he wants to play high pressure football and if he wants to be pressing from the front it's wise that we have a high line I didn't want to make it any higher than that because I don't want us to be too leaky in behind uh, but so I feel 80 works for uh, the depth in regards to the offense uh, in the build-up play we've gone with fast build-up one thing that Ralph Ragnick does not like is he does not like sideways and backwards passes he is not on it guys he does like to go forward uh, as quick as possible so we've gone with fast build up and in terms of the chance creation we've gone with direct passing once again he wants to make sure that the team is playing forward as quick as possible of course in a, in a real game which we will see uh, as we simulate there, there are going to be times that you do have to play sideways and you do have to play backwards but most of the time he does want to play forwards Going into the whip, uh, we have gone with a whip of 70. Again, that allows us to be a little bit expansive, but at the same time, with how we've set up the roles, uh, they should play as well. The players should still have those options to play inside. I didn't want to keep it as a narrow attack as well, as of course, when you play fast attacking football, you may use the whip uh, in part. But we'll, we'll see how that works. And if we feel like it doesn't work from the games that we simulate, then we will adjust that slightly. But I did think, if you guys look at the screen right now, I think going with 60 whip, it just looks a little bit too narrow for me at the moment. I mean, look, if we want, what we can do is we can go in between and we can go with a whip of 65. And if you do look at the yellow dots on screen, they aren't too wide, but they aren't too central either. So you know what? We might we might actually just go and change that. In regards to players in the box, we've gone with seven. Uh, we've gone with uh, four on corners and four on free kicks. 
let's move on to the instructions so in regards to the instructions i'm going to go through uh, every instruction that i put on a player it's quite simple but some of these needed to be there just to match the play style a little bit so we've got diogo dallo and this the, the same applies for tellers as well we've got them on balance attack normal interceptions and we've got them on overlap the same is the same or the same sorry uh, the same instruction is the same for tellers who is on the overlap run type as well in regards to our two sixes we've got pogba who will be balanced and attacking will be allowed to go a little bit more forward than fred uh, he will stay on the edge of the box however and they will be covering uh, the wings uh, fred however is the same thing however he is just staying back while attacking he is also staying on the edge of the box for the cross in regards to uh, the two tens, we're going to go with Fernandez. It's the same thing. We've got them sticking to their position. I don't have them on free run because it did look like that Ragnik did have two quite structured tens that were in line with each other, especially our possession. So we've got them stick to position. Uh, however, they will be getting into the box for cross. And once again, the same is with Jaden Sancho. Nothing has changed. We've just kept him on getting to the box for cross. Um, if we feel like we need to change a few things going forward, then we will look at developing those roles later. If you have any ideas that you think could work for this let me know down in the comments below lastly with our two number nines with Ronaldo and Rashford we have got them on get in behind and stay central that is the same for both of them the reason why I say that once again we want the team to be quite narrow and also when we are quite direct as well it would make sense for both the strikers to be able to apply pressure to both uh, centre backs if teams play with a back four or at least two out of the three centre backs if teams play with a back five and what that should do is leave space for Sancho and Fernandez. now without further ado we're going to go ahead and simulate some gameplay we're going to go straight into a league game we are going to skip pre-season and we're going to see how it looks for our first game i'll see you there 346 minutes later so we have finally skipped through preseason and we are about to approach our first game of the season. We are up against Leeds, which I think is very, very interesting because Leeds do like to play uh, an aggressive style of possession of football as well. So it'll be very interesting to see how this game goes. I'm not going to be playing the game. I'm going to be simming this game. I actually want to sim a few uh, of the important games as well. So we may have a little montage that may last about two to three minutes so you can see how uh, this system works but all the best to Ralph Ragnick's tactics let's get into the game right and we are underway as we can see United look very very narrow uh, from the off don't look like we're applying that constant pressure yet but we do very well there to win the ball back on the ball let's see how oh now we're seeing some brilliant attacking play is he gonna sweat it oh what a finish from Marcus Rashford there nearly going into half time that David De Gea has gone long there not often to play out of the back interesting decision we are conceding a lot of chances though we did concede a lot of chances in that first half right and we are underway against Villarreal in the first Champions League match of this season let's see how the boys do in Europe in regards to the other games we do look a bit leaky though that was a bit of a leaky pass do they concede from that yes they do oh wait that's us oh I thought that was Villarreal that's Fernandez that scored. Fair enough. There's 2 1 United. Very decent there. Right, we've got probably one of Manchester United's most important games from David De Gea. They've gone for a short corner. Let's see what they make from this. Oh, Sterling was in behind there. Brilliant ball. Yeah, there. City are overplaying and committing more bodies forward and they are making us suffer for it i cannot lie ended up being 2-1 city sancho did manage to get a constellation in the 84th minute but foden's goal in the 83rd secured city's win right well as you can see in front of you we do have the premier league table uh, at the moment or what it looks like after 11 games and to our surprise Manchester United aren't there. Chelsea are high flying at the top as they are in real life. Manchester City in second, Liverpool in third. Spurs taking that fourth Champions League spot. If we scroll down, United are in the bottom half of the table. They're 11th. They have won three games, drawn six and lost two. They've scored 16 and conceded 
well. Now they are in and amongst some of the top goal scorers as a, as a team in the league. Uh, nowhere near Chelsea with 24, but the, the amount of goals that they are conceding are taking away points from them. Is that due to Manchester United being a little bit open at the back? Is there things that we need to change in regards to these tactics? Let us know below, but for now we're going to keep it the same just to see uh, how this experiment works out. If we go to the Champions League, so United are at, currently at the top of their group. I mean, they have had an easier group uh, over 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 most. Villarreal, to our surprise, has lost three and one and one one. Uh, United are the other way. They've won three and they've drawn one. Nice to see that they haven't lost any games there. Uh, they've scored nine and conceded four. Right, so they haven't played the FA Cup fixtures as of yet. How about the Carabao Cup? Have they started that? Right, so we found United in round three of the Carabao Cup. They drew two two to Peterborough. Luckily, won five four on pens. That could have been a very very massive upset there. In round four, they drew to Crystal Palace and won again on penalties. Again, we're seeing a lot of draws at the moment and they have uh, Leicester City in the quarterfinals. We'll see how they get on uh, at the end of the season. But for now, what we are going to do is we are going to sim the rest of the season. We're going to go all the way to the end. We're not going to stop in January. We are going to go all the way to the end of the season and see how Ragnik's style of play has influenced Manchester United. I'll be back in just a second. No way has this happened, people. Good afternoon, Mr. Ragnik. We regret to inform you that the board has decided to relieve you of your duties as manager of Manchester United with immediate effect. The board's confidence in you is currently very low. We wish you the very best in your future career. You will be welcome. You will be our welcome guest at any time. Yours sincerely, Board of Directors at Man United. Well then, as we now know, Ragnick shouldn't have been a manager in the first place. He should have been what he is, a director of football. If you want to catch more of our career mode content, be sure to click that video right there. Stay underrated.